Hey, what's up guys? It's Jen, and today I wanted to talk to you about the TSA security screening when you're going to fly with a service dog. And when I said it's Jen, I meant it's migraine Jen. We just got home from California yesterday, so we had to fly. Did I already say that? Whatever. The point of this video is just to tell you guys about the security screening part of traveling with your service dog. Traveling with a service dog is super stressful, at least at first, when you don't know exactly how to do everything. But don't worry, I'm here to be your best friend to walk you through the nitty gritty little tiny details. So if you find this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe because I'm going to keep coming at you with more and more service dog content. Buddy here has absolutely changed my life. He has absolutely given me my independence back and little things like the security screening used to get me really hung up and it made me really afraid to travel with the service dog. So here's what it was like to do the security screening. I feel like I snapped out of migraine Jen and just filmed an awesome introduction. That felt good. I have the TSA website up here. Oh, hi honey, you're home. Hey, it's migraine Jen, I'm making a video. I was trying to come in during a good gap. Oh, here, let me pause. Come on over. Okay, that was just my husband getting home from the gym. Able-bodied able people and the way they just go to the gym. Am I right? You understand? You understand. Do you have bad news, buddy? <laughs> he always looks so weird on camera. He hates doing these videos. My God looks so nervous. Too many people? Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people, buddy. Want to see your happy face. And you're giving them this. <laughs> Still cute. I have my laptop here with the TSA website up. So a lot of my information is going to be from that. But Buddy has also flown with me many times. And we just got home from our trip to California yesterday. So we just flew yesterday, just went through that. And so that's why I feel like right now is the perfect time to tell you about the security checkpoint. This is all so fresh in my head. I always kind of feel bad when I have him come do a video with me because I feel like he really doesn't like all of this. He'd rather be over there under my desk. Okay, you got this migraine, Jen. Buddy and I have flown together, I wanna say probably eight or so flights by now. And of course your dog does need to go through security screening just like you do and just like your luggage does. You and your service dog or your service animal will both be screened through a medical, a medical detector. You and your service dog both get screened in one of those walk through metal detectors. You can either walk through together as a team or you can go one at a time. I'm frozen right now because this feels like such a difficult concept to explain because I'm migraine gen, but I'm just going to start talking and I think it'll come out in a way that makes sense. Um, the language difficulties with migraine and with these changes in brain pressure are very difficult to explain and they're very difficult to work through. There are many different options for ways that you can kind of do this dance of getting everybody checked, especially if you have like other people with you, if you have kids. There are obviously like different ways that you can mix it up to make sure that everybody always has a chaperone and the dog always has someone with them and that kind of stuff. But let me tell you how we did it with my family with the service dog. You can get the dog naked, make sure both of you don't have any metal on you and walk through the metal detector that way. That's totally fine. As long as it doesn't go off, you and the dog are both considered safe. However, most collars, leashes, the service dog gear, you're going to have those clips, those clasps, and those are going to be metal and those will set off the metal detector. So one option is you can go through by yourself, have the dog naked, someone else holding them, and then you call the dog through. There are many times when the walkthrough medical, medical, I have to stop saying medical. There are many times when the walkthrough metal detector is not used. Some people opt out because they don't like the radiation. Some people, they're in a wheelchair. They physically can't do it. They need the wider entry. And then how do they get security screen, right? Our double wide stroller can't go through the walkthrough, can't go through the advanced technology for screening. So in all of those cases, all you do is get a pat down. The service dog is not any different for that. If the service dog sets off the metal detector, then the service dog just needs to get a pat down 
does feel a little better to have you closer. If the metal detector alarms, then you need to go through the pat down. I do not really want to get patted down. So I opt to remove all the metal from myself and put it all through the, the conveyor belt thing. I push all that stuff through with my luggage. I give Buddy's leash to my husband who's flying with me and then I walk through the metal detector like an able-bodied person. Then, one option, again, would be to send naked Buddy through and then he would not set off the metal detector, but I don't really want to go through undressing Buddy and then redressing Buddy just to send him through and avoid that when another perfectly good option is to send him through, just let him make it beep, and then have him go through the pat down. Here are the reasons I like it. One, way less effort. I'm already doing a lot of loading, unloading, dressing, undressing with me and baby and shoes, and I really, I just don't feel like I need the extra work of getting him out of his outfit and then back into his outfit. Two, because of Buddy's training. With Buddy, I typically have him on duty, he's in his vest, off duty, he's out of his vest. So Buddy tends to get pretty excited if I remove all of his gear. He's kind of like, yeah, I can greet people, it's time, da da da. I just didn't want to go through the training hassle and the anxiety in my own mind of whether or not he would try to come out of work mode if we were to like suddenly take off his outfit and then set him loose, tell him to run to me off leash. It just kind of seemed like variables I didn't want to deal with. Whereas when Buddy is working and he's in his vest, he can be off leash anytime. I don't need to worry about it. I do always work Buddy with a leash, but I don't need to worry about him doing a 10 foot run on duty. It just turned it into something that was a zero stress situation for me. Instead of a variable, maybe I should go through some extra training kind of situation for me. And anything that gives you peace of mind as the handler, especially when it comes to your dog and your dog's behavior, is gonna be something that influences your dog's behavior because your dog is vibing with you. They are your service dog. So if you are trusting in them in that moment, then they are gonna be trusting in you. But if I was having any doubts about Buddy in that moment, he would kind of be doubting me. And there are a lot of banging sounds going on and people are throwing stuff and you know things are falling on the ground next to the dog. It's a really startling situation. I just didn't want to have any anxiety. Seemed like a really good option. Less work, less anxiety. On to the pat down. Not gonna lie guys, I am a joke repeater. I make the same joke with every single person who pats down my dog at the airport. Without fail, I always make the same joke. Do you want to hear it? All right, every time the TSA agent comes over, they're wearing the blue gloves and they say, I'm going to have to pat down your dog. I say, okay, come on over. And I'm fine. I, I sit there and I pet Buddy and I tell him it's okay. And I always say in Buddy's voice, just don't get out the thermometer. That's not your voice, huh? Latex glove people tend to stick thermometers in his butt, right? Because he goes to the vet and then they check his temperature. So every time the TSA agent comes over, I'm like, well, just don't put a thermometer in his butt. So anyway, yeah. It's a stupid joke, but they actually laugh every time. Probably not genuine. The pat down, they go obviously all around the gear. They're going up and around the dog's head. They're going down the legs. Your dog's gotta be comfortable with all of that. It's a stranger in a busy place tons of banging and baggage, like I said. Is your dog prepared for a stranger in the blue gloves to come over and grab all up even under their vest? During the pat down, they do not separate the handler from the dog, but you are not supposed to touch the dog while they are doing their search. So I always hold the leash and they actually do let me kind of scratch him on his face and they just have control of his whole body so they can do all of their check. Ing. Checking. The TSA website specifically says that if you have any questions during the procedure, you can always talk to a manager during the process. I haven't really ever had problems with like them not wanting to explain things to me. Obviously security is very rushed, but they have been more than willing to say, okay, you can come through first, have him hold the dog. You know, I always kind of verbally confirm what the plan is going to be before we actually go through the metal detector because that way everything is able to just go smoothly. I just wanted to read this little excerpt from the website because it doesn't really apply to us, but it might apply to you. 
It says that the service dog collars, harnesses, leashes, backpack, vests, and other items are subject to security screening. Items that are necessary to maintain the control of the dog or indicate that the service dog or animal is on duty do not require removal to be screened. So if you're somebody who has like a bunch of extra stuff on the dog, maybe shoes and things like that, that might actually be required to be removed because it's not part of controlling the dog or labeling the dog. Does that make sense? Another thing, if you do need to relieve your dog, so you need to actually leave the security checkpoint and then come back in, you will need to redo the entire security screening just like anybody else would. However, past the security checkpoint, there are P spots for your dog. They do have specific service animal relief areas that if your dog needs to pee, as long as they know how to pee on command and you can get them to do that, then you're good to go. However, I have run into some airports that have such crazy strong cleaning chemicals that Buddy has just refused to go in there. So you might need to leave for a minute or if you have long flights or a long enough layover that you can get a walk-in for your dog, like that's always a good idea. If you do need to leave the security checkpoint and then come back in, you are allowed to cut to the front of the line with your service dog. If you have to exit security because of the service dog, then they let you cut the line for security when you come back with your dog. I don't know if it is airport policy, TSA policy, or if it's pure coincidence, but I'm starting to feel like it's policy. Every time I have flown with my service animal, they have done that wand thing on our stuff. They've done the wand thing on my hands and I believe maybe even on Buddy. Sometimes it has been kind of a wet wipe and then I guess they go and they test it for words I don't really want to say on here because it'll flag my account. But yeah, they'll swab your hands or do the wand and then they go and they put it in their little machine and then they come back and they say, okay, you're all good to go. And then you're on your merry way. I have a feeling they do this for like pretty much anything that's out of the norm because they also always do it to the stroller. We fly through with like, we do check at the gate for our giant double stroller thing. So they always swab that, they always swab the dog, they always swab the heck out of me. Don't be alarmed if they pull you aside to do that. Last but not least, if you bring food, water, medication, those kinds of things for your dog, those have to go through exactly the same security screening as they would if they were yours. So medications, the bottle needs to be labeled, have your dog's name on it, and it still does need to go through the security. If you do bring water for your dog, you'll need to dump that out to get through security because it's not gonna be within that volume limit. So then you'll just have to refill it when you get through. And the website says to inform the TSA agent that you carry those medications for the service dog. Hello, thank you. This is a heart rate alert. Thank you, Buddy. Buddy is a migraine alert dog. He does alert me for my migraines, but he's also a POTS dog, so he helps me with those palpitations if they come, when they come, because they come. Thank you, Buddy. That is it for security screening with a service dog. I hope that was helpful. Drop questions in the comments um, if there's anything that I missed. Love you. Subscribe. There's going to be more service dog content coming up including some vloggy videos from this trip, and I'm also going to show you guys what Buddy does during takeoff and landing. I filmed him on the flight, and I also filmed him during some turbulence. So, you guys will get to see that footage. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up the video. Bye-bye from Migraine Jen. I'm gonna go get some sleep before this gets any worse. Love you.